Alright guys, time to go home. Alright guys, so we are in Boston Logan International Airport. We are in Terminal C, which is the JetBlue terminal. JetBlue actually has a hub here in Boston. So this is the terminal that they use. It's actually really easy to get in and out of. So if you're looking for options to fly into Boston, I would definitely put JetBlue on top of your list. Delta is another good one, but several flights a day, which is always good in case for whatever reason you miss your flight, you know there's gonna be another flight, most likely on the same day that you can make um, as, a, as a backup plan. But as you can see, um pretty modern a lot of self check-in makes life easy so here we go let's go to my gate all right guys made it through security i actually timed that one went in at 455 got out at five o'clock meaning i went through tsa security in five minutes again guys get tsa pre-check get global entry it'll make your life Whole lot easier i will get into detail a little bit about that later on so rule number one if you follow any of my videos is go to the gate first always go to the gate first then settle down go get something to eat go to the lounge whatever you want to do chill out go buy something but first go to the gate that way you know exactly how much time you got before boarding All right, guys, I made it to my gate. Let's go find a lounge. All right, I checked the Priority Pass Lounge app, and the app said that when I just located in front of C19. Uh, 
Here we are. That's the wonderful people at the lounge. All right, let's go find my gate. He will be boring soon. All right, guys, I made it to the gate. Had a great conversation in the lounge, met some nice people. All right. All right, I'm gonna get more in depth um, in another video regarding lounge access, but basically what it comes down to is whatever, there's actually several ways to get into a lounge. The two probably the most popular are gonna be either with a credit card membership to give you access to the lounge, be it Priority Pass, the Centurion Lounges with Amex, um, I believe Chase Sapphire is now opening lounges, also Capital One Venture has a couple lounges that they're opening up across the country. So there's several ways to get access to the lounge. The other way is going to be through flying first class or business class. Now, in most cases, airlines will only give you access to that lounge if you are elite status or if you are flying international first class. I flew to Hawaii first class and did not get lounge access through American Airlines as far as the American Airlines sounds, because technically Hawaii is gonna be a domestic route, not an international one. Um, we're still able to get lounge access just through the credit card um, method, which I explained earlier. That's basically how you do it. Um, again, I'll get in more depth in a different video as far as um, what credit cards give you the most access, which lounges you can access, which are the better ones to go to and spend time in, which offer food, which offer drinks, that kind of thing. So we're gonna follow on that. Um, another thing I wanna briefly talk about, which I mentioned in, in a couple of videos, is gonna be TSA Pre. Um, I actually have Global Entry, which includes TSA Pre. It's $100 for five years, guys. It was included as a perk with my Amex Platinum. However, even if you don't have that perk and you don't wanna go through the credit card route, which I totally respect if you are a Dave Ramsey fan, you don't believe in credit cards, you don't wanna use credit cards, you don't have the discipline, to pay it off every month, then I definitely recommend you don't use a credit card. But pay 100 bucks for five years, it is totally worth it. Um, I actually timed myself going through security today and it literally took five minutes. I looked at my phone, it was 4.55 when I entered security. When I got out of security, um, it was uh, five o'clock. So it literally took five minutes. Now keep in mind, I still had to put stuff um, in my bag, to empty in my pockets, just so I wouldn't have to go through the scanner multiple times and push it through and it still only took five minutes so highly recommend you get uh tsa pre-check if you don't plan on flying internationally global entry it's only you know a little bit more to get global entry and the benefit of global entry is when you come through immigration it's a much faster process so they're gonna start boarding pretty soon so i'm gonna let you guys go First time flying at an A220, so pretty excited. Kind of a big deal for Abgate. This was actually part of the CS series, the 100 and a 300, uh, built by Bombardier. But uh, make a long story short, Airbus stepped in, and it is now an Airbus, technically speaking. But it's built in Canada. First time on an A220, and I must say it's it's pretty swanky, as my friend back home used to say. Um, really neat, very modern. Obviously, a new plane just came out uh, this year, but um, I'm, I'm really impressed. Impressed. Lots of leg room, 
Um, just went through the head. I don't really do new reviews, but that one was pretty clean, very modern, very spacious actually, um, which is interesting considering that this plane is on the small side, made more for regional or domestic. Um, but being a modern aircraft, it's super fuel efficient, has long range. Several carriers use it to actually go across the country. Um, I know Air Canada flies one all the way from San Diego. But uh, this is my first time on one, so pretty Before cool. Before we get moving, all customers must be seated or buckled up. Please make sure your seatback is upright, your tray table is stowed, and all carrying items are put away. Crazy access after takeoff, laptops and devices of similar size can be placed under the seat in front of you. All devices must be unplugged from your...
ladies and gentlemen, if you have checked uh, luggage, you can claim those at Carousel 50. Once again, check luggage, Carousel 50. Thank you and good night. Here's Orlando. Relatively good flight. Crew was awesome. Plane was awesome. Brand new A3, A220. All right, Terminal C. A little bit of a walk right at the very end. Literally the last gate on the new Terminal C230. But happy to be home. One weird thing that happened that I've never seen happen before is the lights completely went out. We were already at the gate, so it wasn't a big deal. But, uh, I don't know. It's kind of freaky being on a plane when the lights are completely out. But other than that, everything went fine. So, as you can see behind me, if you're coming in and you got to clear immigration, you go through the top hallway versus the... Uh, the downstairs where I'm at now, this was a domestic flight, so I'm literally walking out of the same terminal area as when I first boarded. But uh, looks like there's several planes that uh, came in. I don't know if they were circling because of weather. So we, we do have some bad weather tonight here in Orlando. So, anyways, that's it. Happy to be home. Well, cool thing about flying JetBlue, particularly the new aircraft, not necessarily the older ones, because one of the things I used to dislike about JetBlue was the fact that their IFE, their entertainment system, now granted they were some of the first, or one of the first airlines to offer it domestically, so kudos to them, it was really cool back then to, to fly them because you would have in-flight entertainment. Now it's offered in a lot of aircraft, not all of them. But anyways, um, one of the things I used to dislike was when I'd always uh, plug in my headphones. I don't know if I was, I was just unlucky, but I'd have a lot of trouble with the sound. Again, that was a while ago. These new aircraft, their new system, pretty freaking awesome. Multiple options far as charging devices there's a USB there's a plug-in so if you got work to do on a laptop and you have no power you can do it from any seat on the plane and that's something that you definitely can't do on other airlines especially your budget airlines like Spirit um, Southwest I guess you can consider them a budget airline but yeah um, there's uh, multiple charging options, including the smaller USB uh, port, which is used by Android. There was a particular port on this aircraft that uh, was available. So if you have devices that need charging when you're flying JetBlue on their new product, and you can usually tell that by when you book your your flight, seeing the type of aircraft that it is. And if you do your homework, you can actually figure out how old the aircraft is. But a lot of their newer, newer planes, um, especially their A220, I mean, that, that aircraft is new to the, to the general aviation market anyway. So it's uh, no surprise that it had the new entertainment system. But I flew an A320, which was also equipped with the new uh, entertainment, in-flight entertainment. And there was also a new lineup of uh, movies, DirecTV. When you fly direct, uh, JetBlue domestically, pretty much in the continental United States, you also get access to their DirecTV. 
Um, but they do also have a good variety of movies. And their map was also pretty cool. It's like a 3D map that they had versus um, just a regular map where you see a plane flying across the screen telling you where you're at. But anyway, I thought it was pretty cool. Also a very comfortable flight because it was rather empty. So I didn't have anybody next to me. All right, guys.